Um, okay. Are there many Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders with hearing loss in Australia? Thank you, Emily, for that question. And there absolutely are. Um, every few years, the Australian Institute in Health of Health and Welfare publish a report um, called Australia's Hearing Health. Uh, um, and they include statistics on hearing and vision in the Australian population. So from that report, well, we know that um, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders are twice as likely to have otitis media, which was um, one of the conditions described in the presentation. And incidentally, twice as likely to have partial or complete blindness um, than their non-Indigenous peers. As mentioned, otitis media is a treatable condition um, and only becomes uh, becomes permanent, however, if left un untreated. And this can um, often happen in the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander population, uh, um, otitis media left untreated, leading to permanent hearing loss. Um, I do have some stats here. Um, for children, so um, let's spray it with me. Um, okay, the 2018 um, report, um, the rate of long-term ear and hearing problems in Indigenous children aged zero to 14, was estimated to be almost three times the rate for non-Indigenous children, 8.4% um, of the population of that age group compared to 2.9 in the non-Indigenous, and that's the um, Australia's Health 2018 report statistic. Okay, next question. Um, Jane Hill has a question. What is functional hearing? Okay. So that I did mention um, uh, that, and that will be, this functional hearing will be quite um, an important concept in the congenital deaf blindness um, modules. So um, functional hearing doesn't measure a person's ability to hear pure tones. Um, and that's something that an audiologist would, um, would assess. So an audiologist will play a series of um, sounds at different frequencies and different loudnesses. And there will be kind of a series of beeps. So you might have a low, a low beep and a high beep um, and different ranges will be played and the response will be measured um, to determine hearing levels. However, functional hearing measures what is it in day-to-day -day life? What kinds of sounds, what kind of um, auditory experiences does this person respond to? And what what of those sounds makes, makes sense to them? Um, so the um, Texas School of the Visually Impaired um, have actually produced um, a functional, informal functional hearing evaluation, which they um, abbreviate to IF, H E and I am going to copy a URL for that assessment if anybody's interested um, into the chat. Right, give me uh, all panelists and attendees. Here we go. And there we go. I have copied that URL. There now, if you're interested in having a look um, at it's it's a about an 18 page um, document with uh, a whole lot of questions to help you think about how, how someone experiences and responds to sound. Mm -hmm. Okay, another question: um, How does someone begin to learn sign language? Ah, oh. do we have anyone in our audience? Um, who've got experiences of learning their child learning sign language or themselves learning sign language. I'd like to open that up to our participants from via chat and see how, how it happened for you. And then I will um, talk to that question.
And if you happen to be typing an answer, could you perhaps use the emojis and reactions in chat to give us the hoy that you're composing an answer? Okay, I, I will give that a go. So there's no one answer to that. And I think it will depend on what category of deafness you sit in. So if you are a capital D deaf person, so um, uh, a person with deafness born into a deaf family, then the most likely way you're gonna learn sign language is from your family who are all signers. Um, if you are a child um, with um, a degree of hearing loss in a hearing family, it might be the degree of hearing loss. Um, uh, someone might say, okay, this, the, your hearing devices aren't assisting you well enough to acquire speech or this is something that you, you can acquire, but it might always be a struggle. And there will be some situations where you won't be able to rely on speech to communicate and might encourage you to think or the, the person or the family to think about exploring um, learning sign language and introducing the sign language to, to their child. Um, they might attend a school where they're taught in, in sign language. So in Australia, they would be taught in Auslan. Um, so that it might happen through, through school and through signing peers. If a child uh, has deafness and additional disability, the process might be a little bit different if we're not sure about um, how quickly they're going to sort of acquire skills. So they might start, we might start something, particularly if they're in a hearing family or, or um, with maybe something like keyword signs or a simplified um, signing system that supports um, spoken language. Um, and the, I guess for the, the, the key to that answer is that child or that person needs exposure and they need exposure on a regular and consistent level from as many people around them as, as possible. And that's potentially, a, again, where maybe a deaf mentor might come into the picture as well if there aren't many signing people in, in that person's life. So I hope that kind of helps you consider um, the broad range of answers about how, how can someone learn, learn sign language. Okay. Um, yeah. um, all right. Like they, any more questions? I've just got one more. Um, where can you get children's storybooks with deaf characters in them? Ah, well, um, there are a few sites um, in Australia um, that have deaf resources, that sell deaf, deaf resources, being capital D, deaf. Um, and they will, so I think bilby.net, um, the Australian Deaf Children um, site sometimes have some. There's a great list on Wikipedia. <laughs> if you if you Google or go to Wikipedia and um, and Google list of children's book with deaf characters, it'll bring you up a lovely list. Also, the um, same for film. If you want to see film with deaf characters, do the same in Wikipedia. It'll bring you up a lovely list. I believe there's about there's going to be um, a Marvel film with a deaf superhero released shortly, if not already. So that will be exciting to see. Um, if you're interested, you can also go to um, publishers' websites. So public each says if you went to Penguin Australia, um, you can search their books by theme, 
um, and, and keywords. So that could help you, but you have to go to each individual publisher and, and do that. Um, but there's definitely some lovely, lovely storybooks um, on the market that explore and make, make you know, deafness part of our society. Um, how will this video resource be circulated and used for education and training? Uh, okay, so the this uh, <laughs> I didn't hit record. Ah, <laughs> yeah, oh, yes, I love her, <laughs> Emily, <laughs> my saviour, who's pressing all the right buttons, has recorded. So this whole um, webinar um, has been recorded. So that the question and answer section will be taken out of it and put up on on the Deafblind Information Australia website. Um, I, I'm kind of, uh, I'm not feeling brave enough to do that, to bring it up and screen share for you, but, um, it was at the end of the, the www.deafblindinformation.org.au and there you go in the captions. If you go to about deaf blindness and then sensory impairment. Um, you'll see a section on deaf and hard of hearing and the uh, the video that was played in the first part of the webinar is there, along with the PowerPoint slides and the reference list. And then uh, sometime shortly after this webinar, the question and answer section will also be um, loaded um, onto that. Give us a little bit of time because we will need to have the question and answer section uh, video captioned because our webinar won't record these captions um yeah so i think that's how that um while i'm here i'll mention the other three webinars that are coming up so on the 22nd of march at the same time um of day um we emily will be um conducting the introduction to vision impairment webinar and then the following week on the 30th and 31st of March, the same time of day, I will be running the introduction to congenital deaf blindness. And then the next day, the overview of strategies um, in congenital deaf blindness. And we will be distributing the flyers and information and registration details um, very, very shortly. Any other questions? No, okay. Um, well, I think we will conclude the, um, the webinar now. And at the end, if you kind of think of any questions later, I guess you can always access our website. There might be the answers there or send the project officers um, a query at info at deafblindinformation.org or join us in future webinars and ask your question there. Okay, thank you everyone. I hope you enjoyed it and goodbye. <laughs>